All right. Today we are joined with Dr. Masood Wazula with us, who has a uh, very interesting background. And the conversation that we're going to have is going to be around telehealth and the rise in the importance from a provider, from an employer, and from a physician standpoint. So, Dr. Masood, thanks again for joining me, buddy. And I'd like you to kick it off by just, why don't you give us a little background about your specific um, background and experience that you have? Well, as uh, you can tell that I've been in healthcare for a long time. I <laughs> practiced family practice. I'm, I'm a family practice trained doctor. I practiced family practice in South side of Milwaukee for about 25 years. Uh, and uh, about last five years, I work for Aurora Healthcare as a physician strategist. So I'm involved in developing different care delivery models for different segment of populations for a big health system. So that's a very intriguing um, background that you have. And the number one reason I wanted to talk to you about this is from a physician standpoint, you know, when the telehealth first started coming out, you had the wide range of this is the future of healthcare and how it's going to be delivered to we're not sure if this is malpractice or not. From a physician standpoint, from a tool set, where do you envision telehealth fitting in today and moving into the future? So when I, I always look at it, what it was and where it can be. So I yep. can tell you that on one hand, telehealth is a new concept people talk about, but telehealth was being performed for longest time, right? Yeah, people right. used to call their doctors on the phone and we took care of a lot of people on the phone in between patients, every 10 or 12 patients, we sit down and look at the, the pink uh, slips used to come in that, you know, Mrs. Jones called this, Mr. Jones called this. And we took care of a lot of that stuff over the phone. Yeah. Um, right. As time has evolved, the thing which is really exciting that technology is making us do things that we can conveniently and cost effectively with high quality, do it for patients without inconvenience in them to coming to us. Right. Perfectly honest with you, the biggest barrier was that no payer was paying for that. Okay. Right. As time has gone, first thing Medicare realized that, listen, you know, if you can do that, older people don't have to go and sit in their doctor's office or in the places where there was lack of specialists. So yeah. behavior health, you know, about 80% yeah. of behavior health is talking to people. Why can't we do that with, with, with video? So, I mean, when you talk about telehealth, I think you're talking about video, that, that we are looking at face to face and talking to the people. And as our time has gone by, Medicare has given permission for a lot of these things to be taken care of and paid for uh, by using video conferences, video meetings, video way of uh, taking care of the patient. And now it is also opening to the commercial population. So yes. as time is gone, I can tell you the literature suggests that if we do telehealth right, and, and there's a multiple things that we can add to it, there are gadgets which are coming in that patients can, literally mothers can put it in, in, in child's ear and I can look at and say, yeah, you have an ear infection or not. I mean, one of the biggest costs for kids going to the pediatrician is ear infection or, or not knowing what's wrong with them. They are just crabby. Ear Correct. infection is one of the biggest cause of it. So we can, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but we can do a lot of things with the right technology to provide care to the patients at their convenience, at their place, at their time. So if, if you only have your doctor's hat on right now, do you have any concern that doing that via a, a telephone or an app, that you're gonna miss something small that might be a leading indicator to something bigger? Do you, do you have that concern as a physician looking out for your patients with this? You always have the concern. I used to have concern when I used to see patients. Yeah. You, know, you are never 100% sure that what you're going to miss. And that's why it's a continuum. It starts out with you knowing the patient. So it is not like a quick transaction. It's you knowing the patient. And there are things that I feel very comfortable taking care of them the phone with the understanding that within, you know, a day, 24 hours, I'll follow up with them to say how right. they're doing. Uh, and all these things comes down to explaining, talking, telling people that, Listen, you have cough. I think it is just a simple bronchitis. Let's start you on the medication. 
let's talk in 24 hours, see what you're doing. But if you start having fever or chills or God forbid you start yeah. you know, spitting up blood, let me right. know. So there's a whole continuum of things that we can do to protect the patients from ignoring it. But yeah, you always have a little bit fear that you're not gonna, you're, you know, you're gonna miss something, but that can happen in the, when you're seeing the patients also. I totally agree with that. That's, and I never gonna practice medicine, never will, but I can see that it's, we're complex beings, right? There's always something that can go as a variable that goes unnoticed, totally understand that. From your, if you put your provider hat on from a strategist standpoint, how big of a deal is this in boardrooms right now with hospital facilities around, we need to invest and figure this out because we think we can be more efficient, more cost effective, and still get the care out there that we need. Do you, is this a big deal talking point when they're looking at trying to add R&D or, or figuring it out for themselves? It is, and really what is driving is value-based care. So yeah. as you know, that payers um, are moving away from how much you do to how well you do. And now if, if we are not worried about that, oh, you have to come to my office and then when you come to my office, I have to do this, this, this to get paid. I can take that whole concept out and I can just say, looking at you, this is what you need listening to you. This is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna get still the, 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 the reimbursement is mostly based on the outcomes, not right. on what I'm doing over and over again. And this is a big, big, big uh, component of value-based care in all healthcare systems. So where do you think this is going to go in the, in the near future? Do you think this is going to, you know, COVID obviously made people and, and obviously made providers really adapt to it early. And you see it in the metrics, right? Up 4,000% urban, rural, everyone seems to be using it pretty much as much as we would anticipate. So we have the, the, the momentum going. Where do you think in the near, near term, is this going to continue to explode? Are healthcare providers going to continue to, to build on this? Or what's your gut feel on where this is heading? Honestly, it is going to depend on two things, on regulations and reimbursement. Regulations, I'm saying because of COVID purposes, uh, CDC, uh, CMS have said you can cro uh, uh, practice across the state line without having a state license. Yeah. Right? So right. the, the big thing is going to be a regulation. Are they going to let me do that for a blood pressure or for, uh, you know, uh, ear infection or diabetes? So yeah. regulations are going to be a big thing. And then reimbursement is going to be a big thing that our insurance company then thing will pay me because from the, again, provider point of view, if you do this thing, you can decrease visits from 10 to five uh, okay. coming into your office. But if I'm still seeing five patients, my overhead might stay the same. So yep. if my reimbursement is not close to what I was getting before, why would I do that? Do it. You know, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So there are, there, there, there are multiple things, which depends. If all those things come in line, there is a uh, uh, thought that 30% of visits, which is happening to the doctor's office, can be decreased in the next three to five years. 30%? Mm-hmm. 30% of healthcare can be done uh, through virtual care. And that's a conservative thing. It might be even more. Really? The dollar figure on that would be astronomical. Uh, exactly. I mean, we spend about trillion dollars in healthcare, so you can imagine. Right. That's just, that's insane. So you, your personal professional opinion would be, you feel like this can become a part of the integrated care model just like going into the, a, a doctor and see it in person, plug and play, a little bit of tech difference, but the integrated healthcare delivery system, you feel there's not a, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but you have the really key words that you use right now, integrated delivery system. So you can get this care on a transaction basis to people you don't know. I don't know about that care, but if you are talking to somebody who has your electronic medical records, they are looking at your histo history, and then you have some relationship with that team. You don't have to have a relationship with a doctor. You can have the relationship with the nurse practitioner, the PA, the nurse, whoever is your team is. They can manage your care so much better at your terms with using telehealth. That's what I, my biggest concern is, is you see all these providers that come out of the word work, you know, when they have these type, it's a business opportunity, mm -hmm. right? You're going to have providers that see it as a business opportunity and they're going to have these startup health teledoc type situations, not teledoc itself, but like mm -hmm. just that. 
where does the information go? Are you covered under HIPAA? Are we actually integrating with the system? Otherwise, it's just like a triage, acute care type of system. And I worry a little bit about that, but if it's just fully integrated, I'm on board with it. I just worry about the, you know, the nurse hotline, acute care that can write you a prescription in some states, but it never gets back into the medical home. That's, I mean, those are the type of things that we feel. And I think it's gonna be like a journey. Uh, people are gonna do that. And hopefully as they do it with the right ways, they'll get more and more comfortable. And if they do the, the wrong way, they will not do it again. And then hopefully they will do the right way. Would you have any uh, advice for an employer that's looking at implementing a telehealth system here in response to COVID or just knowing that it's going to become a more and more pressing healthcare delivery tool um, here in the short term? They're looking at adding it. Would you have any advice for an employer on, on, on that? I think again, please work with the people who are taking care of your employees because the purpose is not to just do a you know quick care purposes to where they spend a lot more money is chronic care management they don't spend a lot of money in people with a sprained ankle or a cut or you know runny nose so if you if they work with the people who are taking care of the most expensive people who are the chronic care uh, people and they can show them the value with the systems they have it will be very valuable going forward. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed to hear. And I really appreciate the time, uh, Dr. Masood. And we'll let you uh, know if we have any follow-up questions from this conversation. It was my pleasure. And, uh, you know, please, if you have any questions, I'll be available. It's been my pleasure. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you.